Now, we've been looking into God's wisdom. We've established one thing that everybody has wisdom. An armed robber has wisdom. Okay? There's no one without wisdom. A kidnapper is actually displaying wisdom. Yes. So everyone has wisdom, and everyone does what he does based on the wisdom he has. But not everyone that has wisdom has God's wisdom. It is when you have God's wisdom that you can be called a wise person. So not every person that has wisdom is wise. Praise God. So I will keep saying that in every meeting. Because today, when you see the evils going on around the world, it's all about wisdom in manifestation. The other day we were told that somebody who was a member of staff of that company, a long-standing staffer, something got him angry, or he got infuriated, and brought his rifle and shot 12 people dead in the same company. And he said he was disgruntled. In his own wisdom, the only way was to kill people, and he felt good. And engaged the police in a shootout, during which he also was killed. But he had sent 12 people to their early graves, based on his wisdom. So, when people argue, why are there many, 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 many churches, so many churches, and evils, crimes are increasing? It's clear. Everyone is expressing his, their own wisdom. Yes. That's how it is. So we now want to see what manner of wisdom is on display. Whose wisdom is this? We've also established one thing that the wisdom of God is the will of God. Hmm. So Ephesians 5, 17. Today I'm talking on the good pleasure of his will. Still in the wisdom series. The good pleasure of God's will. Now, Ephesians 5, 17 says, Therefore, do not be unwise. Now, this is addressed to people who already had wisdom. It says, don't be unwise. You know, in other words, be wise. They were already wise, as, I mean, in their own eyes. The Bible says, be not wise in your own eyes. Praise God. So if the Bible says, do not be wise in your own eyes, it tells you that all of us are wise in our own eyes. But we're now being warned not to continue to do so. Praise God. Now, Proverbs 3, 7, I'm just digressing to explain that which is on the screen. 3, 7, Proverbs. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Now, this is addressed to every person that is human. Every human being has wisdom. And I've said that many, many times. I will keep flogging it. Because this is the issue about any part of the world. Those who are killing others to establish what they believe in, they are using wisdom. They believe that in their wisdom, that's what they must do. And they enjoy doing it. They believe that that's the only way to do it. Or to get about it. And you wonder, why would they do this? They say, ah, oh, sit down there. That's the only way to get it done. That's their wisdom. So we want to now see whose or what wisdom is this? The people that saw the miracles that Jesus had done and was still doing, and they asked him, they asked themselves, what manner of wisdom does he have with which he does these miracles? So even wisdom can produce what? Miracles. Now, that could be a wrong wisdom too because today we have people who also perform miracles using demonic wisdom. They know that if you can have this wisdom to do miracles, you see crowds coming in. So they go into occultism. They consult mediums to get so-called power which is wisdom to do things and deceive and manipulate people. So you've got to always know this. That's why we are still doing this series for you to know that every minute of your life, once you are awake, 
the wisdom you have is what begins to control your movement. Every one of us. So the earlier we know how to behave, the better for us. You've got to know what or how any kind of wisdom originates. Now it says, be not wise in your own eyes. It's a warning. You already believe you are wise. It says, don't go on that way. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Then what should I do? Ephesians 5, 17. I'm trying to just put it together, all we've done before, because it's important you know, so that this does not become what you forget for a second. If you forget it, you, you may not be alive to regret it. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. It is important. The man driving and overtaking on a hill, maybe he didn't plan to die. But in his own wisdom, if you could quickly overtake this vehicle, maybe it's a commercial driver, he could zoom and go to that destination, be back in another two hours and make more money. But he may have signed his death warrant by so doing. It's all about wisdom. That's the wisdom of the student, wisdom of the lecturer, wisdom of the child, wisdom of the dad, wisdom of the mom. And you find that the most arrogant persons on earth are parents. Because they use their own parental wisdom to train the child. They forget that the child also has his own wisdom. So do what you want to do. Shout. The shouting you want to shout. After shouting, when I'm left alone, I can do what I want to do. So if you train a child by shouting, you are not one of the wisest persons around. Because when the child gets to a place where you are no longer there, he or she will now begin to deploy personal wisdom to exercise the liberty they now enjoy. So it's important we understand this in all our relationships. Now, wisdom of the pastor. Oh, we want to do convention. Let's print envelope, envelopes. And you just take envelopes, give to your MDs. <laughs> you know, wisdom of the pastor. That's not God's wisdom. It's pastoral wisdom. It does not mean it's from the Holy Ghost. No, not in all, not in all cases. So a lot of people are there with their wisdom. I first told you that, you know, I was in a church and they were asking for offerings upon offerings, one single service, about eight offerings. That was wisdom of the pastor in charge. And what happened, wisdom of the members also came up. Once they were coming to church, they would break 100 naira to five places. I mean, if the pastor asks for five offerings, eh? please, be cool, eh? Eh, break them down. 20 naira each, that's even big money. So I mean, it is five naira in 10 places. That's 50 naira. Of course, also another wisdom is that offering time, just close your, clench your fist. The offering is inside, you will never know what is inside there. Is it not true? It's wisdom of the members. I'm trying to break it down to your level so you can see that every day we all display this. You, that's why when you see somebody whose feast is like that, don't offering, check it out. Some wisdom is on display. We no longer give coins. When coins used to be, they are still a good tender. But now, because of our kind of nation, we no longer spend, spend coins, which is very, very wrong for the economy. Yes. It's bad for our economy. Coins are a legal tender. But here, because of our pride and ignorance, we don't want Swiss coins anymore. In advanced nations, if your change is one penny, they will give you. It's only here you get no change. You. you buy petrol at the filling station, no change. There's never change. You bought a commercial vehicle, no, I don't tell you, no change, no deal, so that you can pocket the change. Now, when we used to give coins, offering time, everybody would be a boxer. And if you ask to, to drop it in the offering board, there will be that gentle release. So there will be no noise, no sound given. Put it and flatten it on the, so that nobody will hear clank around. It's all about what? Wisdom. But later, later we find that the Bible says that wisdom will show how foolish you have been. If it says, be, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So it means the real wisdom is the wisdom of God. 
which is about God's will, pronto. We've been told here what being wise is all about. It says be wise, how? By ensuring you understand what the will of the Lord is. Is concerning what? Concerning who? You find that it's like not a finished sentence. The will of the Lord about what? About who? Only in those two areas. It says, be wise by ensuring you understand what the will of the Lord is. One, concerning your life, concerning your health, concerning your relationships, concerning your job, your marriage, etc. Did you realize that if we would go by this scripture and allow the Holy Ghost guide us in all our responses to people and to things or to the environment, we would not make most of the mistakes we normally make. It says, we will be wise. Understand what God's will is in this matter. Aha. What is God's will in this matter? You know, we don't bother to ask that question. We just jump at us. I know what you're trying to say. I know where you are going. <laughs> and you will know also that I'm not a buffer, I'm not a fool. If we can have some restraint here in order to understand what the will of the Lord is concerning the matter, about that person's behavior, about my child's behavior, about my friend's new strange behavior, if I would pause just to ensure that I'm not on the other side, I am not being unwise by jumping into conclusions without understanding God's will. Do you know, this will prevent a lot of damage. But because we all have wisdom, so we don't bother to ask, to check whether we already have understood God's will about that situation. We just see it and conclude and move on and say, this is the situation. So this is why in all we do, there's a major error. When it says, be, be not unwise, or be wise, understand what the will of the Lord is. Oh my God. Ephesians 1. We'll come back to this one. This same chapter. I mean, book. I mean, yeah, chapter 5. But Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus, by the will of God. Look at that. By the will of God. So, whatever you are, ask to be by the will of God. Whatever you will become has to be by the will of God. But you see, people have become X, Y today outside the will of God. I'm happy with my dear brother, you know, uh, Dr. Olufemi, when he was on our talk show on Sunday, the other Sunday. He, he said something very profound. Thank God for that, man. I asked him, with all the talents you have, would you say you are in order to have gone to study medicine? and to have graduated, and to have qualified as a doctor, and to have even practiced as a doctor for some years. He said it was a mistake he made. I mean, had him say that. He said that was a mistake. What a very honest man. That was a mistake. Seven years in university, medical profession that most people would rather die than not become. Most parents want their children to be a doctor. You must be a doctor. Even when that's not their wiring. He said that was a mistake. That was cataclysmic. Think of seven years of his life. And he was still practicing medicine. He even manned a whole hospital for some time. It was at that hospital he found his own wife. Thank God for, I believe that's the only gain he could take from that medical profession. He found a wife. To me, sincerely yours. He said he made a mistake. Going for medicine. A brilliant man who, who graduated who qualified as a medical doctor and practiced medicine, said he made a mistake going there. So, meaning what? He never understood God's will before registering for medicine. And that's why I've told you, the university system makes us more stupid on graduation. Not even Harvard will impart into your life anything called wisdom of God. It's not possible. Because the best of schools is manned by the best of men and they have nothing to offer you in terms of God's will. They can't give you. Not even a Bible school. 
Are you getting my point? So it's important we know. Now the man is doing one of the things he's wired to do. And he's happy about it. So whatever you are. He said, I am an apostle, not by my will, not by environmental will, but by the will of God. I want to ask you this morning, who are you? And by whose will are you what you are? Who would you like to become? And by whose will would that be? To the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful. Next verse, quickly. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. Next one, please. Blessed be the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Now, go on. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Mm. I'm reading through because I can't explain that too deep. That's for another day. Look at this. Having predestined us to adoption. Now, please listen here. Having done what? Predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. Ooh. How? According to the good pleasure of his will. Ooh. You mean the reason he had long adopted us before we even got born into this world, he had adopted us. That's what made our parents meet. Oh, that was what brought your dad and mom together. Even if it was just a fling, there was no love between them. But the fact that they came together and you were the baby that came from that relationship is part of God's own predestined plan. Oh, my God. Now, he says, it's all because of the good pleasure of his will. What does that tell you? God's will has pleasure in it, just as every other will. There is no will that does not have pleasure attached to it. The will of man. The moment you say, I will do this, it carries so much pleasure of yours. You feel good being able to do something and getting it done. Every will, be it will of man, will of God, will of the boss, will of the dad, will of the mom, everyone is excited because your will is what gives you pleasure to carry out. Every will has pleasure tied to it. I will show you that I'm not a houseboy. You know, you can look at the pleasure with which that is spoken. Everything you will do or you choose to do gives you some inner joy. Now, whether it is wise or not will be another day to find out. When people do what they do because of the pleasure of their will, they do it and they feel good. When things now go wrong, they will forget that they derive some pleasure at the point of doing that thing. So they know they blame it on the devil. So, so the will of God, as any other person's will, carries pleasure with it. But you know why? He now says, this pleasure is good. So the, your own, the pleasure of your own will is a bad one. Ah. It is pleasing to you, but it's a bad one. So God's own will also has pleasure. It pleases God to carry out his own will. Just as it does me to do my own will. It says, but we are wait. The will of God, the pleasure of the will of God is a good one. It's good pleasure. So what it means was my own will, which also carries pleasure, that pleasure cannot be a good one. I like it, but it will never show that it was a good one. Only God's will has good pleasure. No other will of any other person. Please note this place. That's why it's my, tied, my topic today. The good pleasure of God's will. So anytime you feel like doing something and you derive joy doing it, ask a question. Is this pleasure I'm deriving a good one? <laughs> because only God's will 
carries good pleasure. The pleasure that is good. Oh, why did you do that way? I enjoyed doing it. I'm happy to have done it. Wonderful. That means he derived pleasure in that act. But the question will be, was that pleasure a good one? It could never have been. Because no other will has that pleasure that is good. That may sound like a check to everybody here. Next verse. To the praise of the glory of his grace. <laughs> Ephesians is too deep a book. By which he made us accepted in the beloved. Now, follow closely. In him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. Now, watch the sequence. The forgiveness of sins. In Christ Jesus we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Go on. Which he made to abound towards us in all what? Aha. Uh -huh. And prudence. Look at the next one. Having made known to us the mystery, the mysterion. Mystery means secret. Having made known to us the secret of his will. Ooh. That tells you God's will is a secret. And that's why no one university can unfold it. It's, it's beyond their capacity. They don't have that capacity. They cannot touch it. Unless God, whose wisdom we're talking about, reveals it to you, you can't touch it. Gray hair will never give it to you. Age will not give it to you. Status will never give you. Name anything. Education will not give you. Or you may have risen on the job. That does not confound you what we're talking about. It is the mystery of his will. It's the secret of his will. That means it's only by revelation through the help of the Holy Ghost you can say, I know God's will in this matter. Can you not see how we've damaged our children using the wisdom of the parents? How we've weakened those we were leading. How a pastor can destroy those he pastors. Because he's not using God's wisdom who sent him and called him. But using his own personal wisdom. Wisdom of the Bible school. It's there too. So it takes being totally dead. Based on this revelation. To be able to lead people in the right direction. Based on God's plan. So you have to mind who you listen to. Mind who you listen to on radio and television. Because listen. Anybody can preach God's word, but not everyone is in the will of God. You mind who you listen to, because you may not recover. A lot of people today, including myself, pastors, we are under pressure to do the pleasure of our own will. Only a handful of people, and I know they are still somewhere, very, very many. I hope I'm one of them too, but I'm trusting God to help me. I took a decision long ago never to do my will. My will died. Three years ago, you may not be able to accept that because I'm struggling with your own. I'm not at your level, but I'm still learning. So, this is good. You are listening to the three years of work with God in this single teaching. Oh, yes. Baba Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Copeland said, He said, 52, 51 years in this second year now in ministry. Said, this is, this is all the years I'm sharing with you. And I said, wow. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he proposed in himself. Go on, please. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one. All things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. Look at the next verse. Amazing. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated, predestined, according to the purpose of him. Look at this. Who works? How many things? How? According to the counsel of his will. I will pause here and explain. It says, this God... In him, we have, through Christ now, we've obtained an inheritance. Being predestined according to the proper God. 
of him who works all things. Oh my God. All things. How? According to the counsel of his will. That, that, I want to really encourage someone here this morning. Listen, even if you had made a very terrible mistake about your own life, let me encourage you this morning, don't despair. Don't go into depression because of that. Because somehow, in God's mercy and wisdom, he is at work in your life, working all things. The setback you have just experienced, the failure you thought you have made of your own life, you have shipwrecked your future. It says God in his wisdom knows how to recalibrate you. It, 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 it says God works all things. How? According to the counsel of his will. Ah! Counsel there is also wisdom. Based on the wisdom of his will. He knows that if only you listen to me. You won't have become what now. But it's, I will still, uh, since you are, you are back to me, I will rearrange you. Yeah. I know how to spin you again. Put you together. Break the pot of your life. Break it, collapse it, grind it, and make another paste or clay of it. And mold you again. He works all things. According to the counsel. I know my will for you is to become X, Y, Z in that area of life. But you went after the counsel of men. However, I can redirect you. I, I'm still going to work you and work in you in a way that it is that original will I had for you that I'm going to rechannel you to. Oh my God. It says, according to the purpose of him, who works? I love this phrase. It says, all things. Mm. All things. Name them. They are under this umbrella of all things. He works. Give me other versions here. MS NLT, Jerusalem Bible, Wycliffe, TNCT. There are so many. Please buy Bibles. Don't just carry one and uh, carry me and go. No, buy other Bible translations. Don't buy the ones that say Jesus is not Lord. Because in that, that's NIV. The modern NIV, don't buy it. This one says, furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance, da, da, da. For he chose us in advance. And he makes everything work out according to his plan. Ooh. He makes everything work out according to his plan. Even that which you were denied, even though you deserved it, shh, don't fight. Don't destroy anything. He would use that, that rejection you have just suffered to redirect you, rechannel you. Based, it says, whatever they've done against you has not tampered with my will for you. Sure. He said, whatever you have suffered, environmentally, personally, maritally, name it. Shh. So long you still acknowledge me as your God. I will channel you. I'm going to use that naked negativity to repackage you. So that it only becomes part of your life story. It will never tamper with my original plan for you. It has never touched my plan for you. Nor does it have any capacity to stop my plan for you. So, oh God, that's why it says, in all things, give thanks. You know why you should give thanks? Because somehow, I say, Lord, oh Lord my God, where is your face, Baba? I've been disappointed. Jehovah, my God, you are my God. So now that you've come back to me, I would show those enemies of yours how no life can be taken from my hand. Nobody can stop that original plan I had for you. Oh, God. Oh, God. It says, look at this one. It says, the one who does all things in agreement with its designs. Now, I don't know if you have heard government 
people say this. All the original plan of this area has been altered. And we are going back to the master plan. But Abuja FCC, they are now working on that. And they are going to demolish buildings. When God allows you to be demolished in an area, it's because through the demolition, the master plan of God concerning you shall be revisited. That is his plan. The master plan has never been destroyed. No, anybody could have built houses under high tension, on top of drainage, which is against the plan. But the day government decides to do the right thing, all those buildings will go away. You know why? The master plan still remains. Hallelujah. If it's like that in the, in the midst of men, it's much more so in God's plan. He says, he works all things. He does all things in agreement with his designs. What man of designs? His designs for you. You may say, oh, why did I marry this person? I, I was in the U.S. So I won't mention the area in the U.S. After I administered, people of that church went to the pastor and said they would like to see me. You know, so the pastor said to me, ah, would you allow people? I said, oh, if you permit it, it's about you. It's not about, I cannot say yes because I'm a guest speaker. So I don't carry their hearts. You are their pastor. You feed them daily. I only have fed them once or twice. It is you. If you permit it, fine. He said, yes, you would permit. They kept coming. And one woman sat with me. Before she could talk, she collapsed in tears. Ah! And I began to shed tears inside me. That's what God does for me to help me. Compassion. I can be so compassionate. That's, compassion brings miracles, signs and wonders. Yes. My heart broke. She was stuck in it. She couldn't talk. Gave her handkerchief. I gave her some stuff to wipe her face and all that. When she now was able to talk, she said, sir, I had concluded to leave my husband. It could have happened yesterday, even today. Everything is in place. All papers and documents signed and sealed. He does not know he has lost me to another man. I'm not going to marry yet, but I already have left him. He does not know. It's just to, I don't know why I've not done it. It was, maybe I could have done it after his service today or tomorrow Monday. Ah, but when you were talking, he said, you are here. All things are set to leave your husband. Don't go. Ah, I said, God. Who is this man? Not even my pastor knows my plan. I will have said, my pastor told you. She says, I am, I'm disappointed. Why? He said, because God brought it from Nigeria to expose me to you. I said, how? He said, because I had concluded the plans. My husband is evil. Why did I marry him? But why did you say so? I said, I don't know you, man. He said, that's why I'm convinced that God has exposed me. I have not told anybody. Not even my pastor knows this. Everything I put is as if I told you what I do. You were talking exactly what I put in place. And I held hands and began to share with her the Bible. I said, thank you, my sister. Look at it this way. I'm not justifying your husband's behavior. But if God could, like you said, bring me from far away to this place. When I didn't even have any money, money to persecute this trip. It's because of you. At the end of it, she surrendered. It. She said, I'm going to tear the documents. I will love my husband again. And I asked her, was your husband in that service? She said, yes. So he didn't know he had lost. He said he wouldn't have known. He's an evil man. He pays no cover on my children. He's just there like a dead wood. Ash. Now, you know what? As she now surrendered to that will of God, you know what's going to happen? God right now will have moved into our case to redirect the whole thing. The same man that was a minus will now begin to do like, uh, it's because God has a way of taking the disaster of your life. Because he is God. Because only God knows the original master plan concerning you. And he knows how you've been abused. You've been maligned. You have been brought down by whatever reasons. But you know what? He is still God as we return to him. 
Change my life, O oh Lord. May I be like you. And what does it do? It takes us again. You know why? Only God knows the original plan. So only him can take you and redirect you. <laughs> so when people now, knowing that you were down, are now still mocking you, they are wasting their life. Because the only, they don't know God's plan for you, so they can only really mock you. But he who alone knows plan for you, knows how to take you again. To clean you up. And say, well, don't, my picking, don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, sit down there for now. Sit down here. You may not, it may not tell you why it says sit down here. Just sit down there. Sit down there. You may leave it there for another one month or one year. Don't talk. Don't argue. You know why? He's getting you Hallelujah. back. Amen. Yes, getting you back. Based on the original master plan. Oh, God help me. Jehovah. He does all things. Now, we don't know those all things. We may never know them. That's his own secret. He does all things. Meaning what? He does the talking to somebody who should remember you. He, he may not tell you that one. He does the talking. Don't you see that you've been abandoned for too long? Move before I waste you. He's doing the talking. But you think God is doing nothing. You don't know God's plan. You don't know what he is planning to do, who he has spoken to. Listen, when God was speaking to that man, to man here about their dickiness, he, dickiness didn't know what God was busy doing. My God, he didn't, she didn't know that God had gone ahead of her. That the reason I was in the U.S., unknown to me, part of the reason was her to be settled. If I knew, maybe I would have remained there for one year or more. But because I didn't know, in my foolishness, God's wisdom began to move me, move me to the U.S., from place to place to 13 states. In the course of all that, this man one day called my number. said, sir, this is my story. I've only listened to you since you came to the U.S. I have found that God is big in your life. Hear my story. As he was talking, his disappointments, his, his, the disasters of his life, how she, he had been messed up. Ah, of course, I can't give you details here. While he was talking and saying that he had never, agreed, he had agreed never to talk about any wife again based on his unpleasant experience. He said, sir, I am afraid of women. I don't want to say I hate women. I am scared. I would rather stay like this than marry another evil. But God is telling me I should, I should marry again. I said, ah, how? As I was praying to show me, I've been fasting for days and nights. to say, How oh, and why should I marry? He showed me you, sir, that should tell you the story. Eh? And as I was talking with her and with him on the phone, I was in he was in, in New York. We were talking and talking for about 40 minutes and all that. Boom! The only person that can fit into his life, that will not destroy him again, is booming. Ah! I said, God, I have never told any man to marry anybody in my life. He said, well, because I am your God. That's why one of the reasons I brought you here. Tell him. I said, no, sir. He said, I said that's why I brought you. That's why I revealed you to him to share with you. That's why for the first time in your life, you will tell somebody, this person will fit into your life if you agree. I ran to the house where I was. I ran out again. I had never done so. Listen to me. God's will. You may not have done it before. When it comes to you, you had better do it. If I had stuck to my personal conviction, I would not have known that I had been the reason Bumi was still single. I did what he told me. I said, sir, I have a sister. I've never done this all my life. As you were talking, the Lord, who is my master, told me to share with you a sister. After talking, I said, but go and pray in case God does not confirm your spirit. After praying, he came, called me back and said, sir, that was after some days. I said, sir, the fact that 
that person you said lived in your house? I said, yes. She trained all my sons. My wife just gave back to them. She trained them. This one would never bring damage. He said, sir, even if it's a stick, I will marry her. I know if it's a stick that you have spoken about, she's the excellent person for me. The man went all the way to do that wedding you saw. Now every day when he, he calls me, he's thankful. All his friends are calling and thanking me. I said, don't thank me. I was simply in the epicenter of God's plan. You know what? He's happy now. All his children are happy. His friends are happy. They call the cleaners woman every day. Thanking God that he is a gift to them. Now, God who does all things according to the counsel of his will. To agree with his designs. The man now who had vowed never to marry again. He's excited about his new wife. And Bumi's testimony is all over the world. When God handles you, not even you will be able to explain where he's taking you to. Listen, can I encourage you this morning? Your life is not in ruins. Never. Your life will never be in ruins. Not in the hands of this master who does all things in agreement with his designs. Oh God, oh God. How down are you? If not gone so down like Jesus had gone to, to the grave, how discouraged are you? Listen to me. Just let him. Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Mm. Thank you. I, Paul, <laughs> haven't been sent. Here was a guided missile because he was sent. That's a missile packaged by the Lord, sent to some destination to do only the good pleasure of God's will. <laughs> by Christ, see again, as part of God's master plan. Oh, 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 hold it. The, the Paul speaking here was an enemy of God. He destroyed many people who followed Jesus. He destroyed many. He put men in bondage, used rope to bind them, to tie them. He witnessed against many. He was a prolific lawyer, a sound lawyer by training. Anyone he spoke against in the court, the person went to jail or was killed. He was so erudite, you couldn't argue with Paul. On his way to Damascus to destroy God's people, God appeared. Bam! Bulldozed him. And he became blind. And Jesus said, Saul, you were Saul. Saul, Saul, why do you attack me? Why do you persecute me? And Saul asked, who are you, Lord? Oh, so he knew that was the voice of the Lord. An enemy still recognized God's voice. So what, what are you doing there? You can't hear God. Say, I'm discouraged. I'm downcast, excuse me. In that, your discouragement, you can hear God clearly. It's your right. Now, according to, as part of God's master plan, look at that. Because, so all the time Saul was destroying God's work and God's people, he, God's master plan was to still use him. Odogu. Look at that. God's master plan was to still pick up this enemy. Now, recall that after that encounter, the Lord showed him, and I went to show Ananias. Ananias, go. Go to so-so person's house. There's Saul of Tarsus. He's in that person's house. He's blind. I have revealed to him that somebody came to lay hands on him and his sight was restored. Ananias began the story of the, Talib of the Taliban. He said, if he's blind, good for him. In fact, I thought you would say he's dead. Lord, did you realize what he did to you? Jesus said, I saw it all. The bit you saw, I saw. The much you didn't see, I saw. Say another thing. Maybe you have forgotten that this man destroyed many. 
Yes, you could only, you could only count 100. I know he killed about 500. What you knew, I also knew. What you don't know, I still know. Another thing, ah, Lord, I can't lay hands on him or to recover. He said, it is you that will lay hands. That's why I picked the arrogant to you. I wanted to use the arrogant person like you to do it. That's why I came to you. Say another thing. Ah, if I tell you what, he says, move. For he is a chosen vessel. A way. Chosen vessel. When did you choose him? Shh, you are too small to ask that question. Move. I chose him when he was still an enemy. You chose an enemy? Yes, yeah, because I am God. I have a master plan. Not available to you, Ananias. Get up now. That's why don't give up on anybody. The enemy in your life today could be the best friend tomorrow. Don't destroy that relationship. Keep that door open. Hey, open to an enemy. Shh. God is at work in the lives of your enemies. To do what? Because of his plan for you. So those enemies of yours have in their custody what you are looking for. So you will get them humiliated to the point they come and deliver to you. They say, take, we still don't like you. We hate you badly. We wish you will have died long before now. But take, my brother gave me money to pay my school fees. He had told me every day he didn't have money. Every day he didn't have money. Every day he didn't have money. And God was assuring me I should go for my master program. I said, Lord, by Wednesday, it was, it was Wednesday, like, a day like this. I said, by next week, Wednesday, you must pay the money so I can know that you sent me to, to that school for master program. I said, yes. Wednesday went, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday next week, following week. That Wednesday came. <laughs> All day, nothing. By 8 p.m., my brother was at the table eating. I sat down somewhere there, and I had a voice. Didn't you say... God should appear in one week. I said yes. That was Wednesday. Last week I said yes. Okay. What has happened? God has failed you. Ah. It's 8 p.m. The day is gone. I said no. It's still today, till 12 midnight. It's not yet gone. God does not feel anybody. It was in my thoughts. As he was the devil was speaking to me and I was telling him back, no, the day is not yet gone. It's just 8 o'clock. Four hours, less one second before this day passes. Who are you? God does not fail. It is still enough time to show up. As I said that, see my brother, he just did that. Yay! 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 Licking his, he was eating doing that. Yay! He ran to, I didn't know. I said, but Akilo he brought one polythene back. Muiwa, have this. Yeah. Why should I die? Ran to the room again. Ah. So I couldn't see what was in the polythene bag. Brought to And was saying, I don't have money. I have no money. But I don't know what happened to me just now. Something just came upon me. I should give you this money. But I don't have. If you don't have, which one is this? <laughs> Count it. Go and pay your school fees. I don't have. Listen. God's master plan for you shall come to pass. Yeah. I have to pause here. Stand up. I'd like to pray for yourself. Please, please pray for yourself. Many of you have given up on yourselves and on your loved ones. Listen to me. God's master plan is alive. But it's up to you. Begin to pray. Lord, just pray in the Holy Ghost first. Let your master plan for me be Brought back to my, I'll bring me back into your master plan. Lord, only you can do it. Make it your prayer. Shut your eyes, please. Hold your phones. Hold your phones or your bags. Hold your bag. Hold your phones. And close your eyes and pray this prayer. Lord, now I know you've never allowed me to wander too far away from your designs for my life. Oh, maybe there's no job yet. It does not matter. It's after the counsel of his will. It's still in line with his designs for your life. It's his designs for your life, Esther. God is at work 
in your life. Nagar, grabagada, ibragada gada, rabagada bosaga, brigade ba salugada ge, ibrogodo gosonto la purigadesa, inahili gosoko lakita ke kolibro sokoto, ilebro koso la bragada ikeka sokonta. In Jesus' name. He yeah. said I should conclude this one. Go to verse 9 of this, verse 9. Just look up verse 9, please. Ninth verse. Give me New King James for this one. Now. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom. And spiritual understanding. We've been praying for you that you be filled with the knowledge of his will. Now, what does that tell you? It is not shoes you need. You don't need a car right now. You don't need a wife or husband. I'm not saying they're not good and good things. They are. But all you need is the knowledge of his will. Because his will contains all those things you're looking for. You see? That was the prayer Paul prayed for those people, the Colossians. It was all, you know, it, it, it's, it's all inside the capsule. Everything a newborn babe needs is in the breast of the mom. That's why they call it all, I mean, a, a exclusive breastfeeding. That's why God is called El Shaddai, the breasted one. One in whose breast all that is required to be strong will, will, will be taken from. In his breasts, everything we want, wife, husband, baby boy, baby girl, twins, quintuplets, sextuplets, septuplets, whatever. Eight babies at once. They are all in his breasts. We are his breasts, the word of God. First Peter 2, 2 says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. You want to pray it now, Lord? Lord, fill me with the knowledge of your will. That's the only way to know how to relate to your husband, relate to your, your MB, relate, uh, MD, relate to anybody, even those who hate you. Only the feeling with the knowledge of God's will would change the matter. Pray in Jesus' name. Pray, pray. Open your mouth and pray, please. Father, fill me with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom. In all wisdom. In all wisdom. And spiritual understanding. Fill us, O oh God. With the knowledge of your will. In all wisdom. Thank you precious Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus name we pray it. Amen. Father fill us up. With the knowledge of your will. Such that. You begin to unfold to us. What your original master plan is for each of us. Amen. Thank you Father. In Jesus name. Amen. I have to let you go because time is up. Thank you for coming. Good morning.